Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Will Morganweck, and I'm the Director of Product Management for .NET Nuke Corporation. I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar on making your internet more productive. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to just make sure that everything is broadcasting properly. So if I could, I want to make sure everybody can hear me. If you can, please look at your GoToWebinar control panel. There's a little button where you can raise your hand. If you could just raise your hand if you can hear me. All right, great. Uh, and let's see here. So, and I'm assuming everybody can see. If you could just raise your hand real quick. Perfect. Great. So I'll be going over a lot of information throughout this webinar. If you have a question at any time, please don't hesitate to ask, use the Ask a Question feature in the GoToWebinar. Um, just feel free to ask your question right away. There'll be time at the end of the presentation for questions. If we're not able to get to all of the questions, well, we'll do our best to respond um, by email within a day or two. What I'd like to do is just take a, a few minutes and tell you a little bit about uh, .NET Nuke. Um, you know, we have several, um, we've got a couple dozen people in the line right now. Um, some of you are likely familiar with DNN and Others of you are not. So I'm going to take about five minutes to tell you a little bit about us first. Uh, at .NET Nuke, we're a software company. We have a web content management system with many different additional uh, capabilities. One common theme that we come across with customers is the problem of business agility. Uh, by that, I mean the struggle with doing things faster, doing them more efficiently, as well as affordability um, and scaling their business in an environment of unpredictable change. Think back to the year 2000 and what the internet was like then. At that time, the web was very static. Um, we had a lot of brochureware type sites. Um, but as you know, in the past 10 years, things have changed dramatically. But who could have predicted the growth in social interactions? Um, who could have known how absolutely critical mobile devices would become in delivering content? Fundamentally, how we're using websites today has changed from just the source of information to a place of meaningful interaction anywhere, anytime, all around the globe. So we are, we're encouraging our customers and prospects to think about making the right platform decision that allows you to adapt quickly to that unpredictable change on the web. With DNN, our customers have the ability to adapt quickly and take advantage of new opportunities for their online presence. A little bit more about the company. We're the world's number one content, web content management system in the Microsoft ecosystem. We're just about to take over 200 commercial customers. We started out as an open source project in 2002. We are by far the largest and most successful open source project in Microsoft history. And over the years, we've had over 7 million downloads of the software. Finally, and last but not least, we have a very large and strong community of folks that contribute to the open source project and have a depth of knowledge about .NET Nuke. Actively, that actively participate and continue the growth of the project. Without our ecosystem, we wouldn't be where we are today. So now let's get started with the main topic of this, for this webinar. I want to start off by making sure everyone is familiar with the concept of an internet. I'm assuming that everybody is, but let's just make sure um, and make sure we're all on the same page. So the internet is not a new concept. It's simply a way of classifying a website application um, that's reserved and restricted to the use of employees within a company. Um, you may have also heard terms such as Internet 2.0, the social internet, and Enterprise 2.0. <clears throat> Excuse me, but at the end of the day, we're still just talking about various kinds of intranets. Um, a lot of intranets, they're used for many different things. Um, sometimes they're used for hosting applications, um, and sometimes they're used for just simply an employee directory. Um, so one of the primary initial purposes of an intranet was to provide employees with an online directory to make it easy to locate other employees within an organization. Um, so being able to look up extensions, you know, very, very simple functionality that we really take for granted today. Um, but that's what was really the start of an intranet. But over the years, it has evolved greatly. The companies are not only using intranets for employee directories, but also for knowledge management and also facilitating corporate governance. So well-designed intranets have been proven to drastically improve employee productivity. On the other hand, there are also intranets that are about as successful as that blog that you have that only gets updated once every few months. 
So it's really important that you make sure that if you're going to have an intranet, make it successful, make it productive, make it easy for employees to use, and make it so that employees want to keep coming back to it. <clears throat> so before we can make our intranet more productive, we need to be able to identify some common problems. So let's take a quick look at five things that are detrimental to the success of your intranet. Every website needs to have a purpose. You can't just say, hey, let's start an intranet, whether it's a brochureware site, microsite, e-commerce site, blog, or an intranet. Without a clear purpose, it's very unlikely that you'll be successful. And when we talk about uh, the lack of direction or making sure that we have a clear direction, there's really two levels to this. Um, we're really talking about properly defining the goals and objectives of the site, you know, making sure that people understand the purpose that you're setting out for this intranet. Again, it's not about just saying, hey, look, we have an internet. It's about making sure that it has a purpose. However, we also need to look at the lack of direction as how it applies to how the site is structured and organized. The team that's managing your internet, internet and the employees using the internet need very clear direction. That means that they need to be able to see the tools, they need to be able to see the content, and they need to make sure that it's easy to use and understandable. So making sure that you have a very clear direction is one of the first things that you have to get out of the way um, and make it very clear to your employees how to use the internet. And also that applies to making sure that everyone, the business stakeholders, the executives, the upper management, have a very good understanding of how we're going to use this internet, how we're going to make it more productive. The other problem is lack of governance. Giving people too much control without some kind of process or oversight, nine times out of ten results in failure. So you need to make sure who has the ability to manage the structure of the internet. Can the IT guy change the page navigation without informing other users? Or worse, can a department head move content around that affects other users? You need to make sure that you have a process in place that will allow you to track and measure changes. It's important to provide your users with the right amount of trust and guided control. Don't just give them the tools and say, have at it, and let's build out an internet. Make sure that they have the guidance and the education and the background on the tools to help successful. You know, and finally, you know, on this note, some companies really don't realize how important their internet is to the organization until it goes down or something isn't working properly that the employees depend on. And you don't want to be in that situation. So you need to make sure that you have backup plans, you have disaster recovery. You have ways to make sure that, that once your internet is part of that daily use for your employees, that they can depend on it and that it's always going to be there. You just launched your shiny new internet and you just gave six department heads full access to their respective areas. They're excited and they start customizing their areas and filling it with information. They create new pages and add really large pictures and pages start to resemble something you would see on GeoCities or AOL in the late 1990s. Um, unfortunately, your, in, your shiny new internet isn't so shiny anymore, but why did this happen? You could say that poor governance played a role. It probably did have a good part of it, but so did your poor information architecture. As you plan your site, you need to plan with real content. A lot of times people will put out wireframes and they'll fill it with just you know, uh, basic text or lorem ipsum, something that just is a placeholder. Um, you need to plan your site with real content. You need to engage with key stakeholders and find out what they want to share. Go through mockups that actually have content, that actually make sense, and that actually will apply to what you're going to use on the internet and what the departments are. Get the department or the, the, the champion from a department, get them involved early so that they understand what they want to share and you understand what they want to share and how that they best see the structure. Um, or even better, another way to do it is that the internet team defines what other areas can share and provides them with design guidelines. Either way, you have to make sure that your design and uh, site structure will grow as the content grows. So making sure that you have your information architecture um, clearly defined up front, making sure that you have pages and a layout that makes the most sense for all the departments in your organization is really key to a successful uh, internet. Um, you know, obviously other departments are going to have different needs, and so you need to take that into account as you design the different sections of the internet. But you also want to make sure that 
you know, a person going over to the marketing department's area of the internet, you know, can use it the same as if they went over to the sales area. Um, so you need to make sure that it, there's common usage there. Um, also, when we talk about poor information architecture and making sure that you have the right information architecture, it's about making sure that you do not create silos within your intranet. One of the keys to successful intranet in today's world with how we're sharing and collaborating together is breaking down those silos. So giving an area for a marketing area, making sure that that information can flow to other areas in the organization is, is vital to the success and how people interact with you on your intranet. Another thing you need to make sure you have is for some, some key performance metrics. Um, you can't improve something unless you know the problems. So make sure you define a set of performance metrics that fit your company and start with a baseline. Set a series of initial performance metrics and review them frequently. Uh, you're going to need to be prepared to adjust them if necessary, but always keep track of some basic statistics. The most important aspect to watch um, are your usage st statistics. Um, but you need to get specific. It's not just about page views and how often the user visits a site. With an intranet, all your users are identifiable in most cases. So use this to your advantage. Uh, you want to know what departments are using the intranet the most. Are employees in specific locations getting more out of the intranet than others? Um, what's the peak time of day for intranet usage and why are they using it at that time? What pages or pieces of content are the most valuable? You know, breaking it down into actually analyzing the data and the content that's being used on your intranet is going to be what's most important to making it successful and productive. Um, it's not just about putting a blog post out there or a company announcement, but it's about that content and making sure that it's useful for employees. So what's also important there is to make sure your users can provide feedback that you can analyze as well. So every page on your intranet and possibly individual pieces of content should provide users with the option to rate the value of that content. So a lot of times you'll see this um, in the forms of like buttons, um, thumbs up, rating stars, was this useful, um, give feedback. Most of those tools are a very public way of providing feedback, um, which is good. Um, it starts to, you can easily see that, um, but in an intranet, those tools do work but it, is, a, is an employee going to rate the CEO's blog one star? Is he going to say, hey, this was not a very good blog post and make sure that every employee sees it? And you know, ask yourself, do you want to create that type of environment or encourage that type of culture? So even though it might be accurate, um, you want to provide your users with a way to provide feedback that is both measurable but also private if that's what you deem to be necessary. So as we start to look at some of the performance metrics, you want to make sure that it's something that you can measure you want to make sure that it's not only about how people are using the site itself, but you want to get down into the actual content. What content is most valuable? What pages are most valuable? It's also important to look at the users. You need to be able to look at the users of your internet and find out who your key influencers are, who your content providers are, who is using the internet the most and why. Is it the person that's creating the content? If you have 10 people constantly creating content, but you only have those same people, people reading the content, is that really the most productive use of your intranet? So it's really important that you make sure that you set up some statistics and performance metrics so that you can figure out the best way to measure the usage and the productivity of your intranet. And finally, at one of the, other, the last roadblock that I want to mention is poor usability. Um, this is probably the biggest roadblock to a successful internet, and if you really think about it, it's probably a bigger, bigger roadblock to just websites in general. But uh, companies will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to make their website successful, but at the same time, some of companies expect the same kind of results from an IT guy with a server under his desk who just got tasked in a management meeting to, to spin up an internet. Um, so you, you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, but if you want a successful internet, you'll have to make an investment. This is both an investment in time, an investment in resources, um, and an investment from other key stakeholders in the organization to, uh, to, base, to, to grow the content and grow the internet. And it need, the internet needs to be properly designed from the start for ease of use. Employees should want to go to the internet, not dread it. You know, the idea of an employee says, hey, go, I have that on the internet, go look at it, 
that employee goes, oh my goodness, that's not a good sign you have a productive intranet. If they say, sure, I got it, that means that things are starting to work for you. Um, test your intranet design. Test it with a small group of users. Maybe start with one department or start with the leaders of several departments. Treat the design just like you would a website. You want to get feedback. You want to see how people are, are navigating the site, how they're interacting with the content, how they're generating the content, how much time they're staying on pages. And those are the items that are going to be key to making sure that people stay engaged and get the most use out of your internet. Poor usability will cause people to not to want to use it. They'll dread it, and you want to make it exciting for them. So now that we've identified some of the common roadblocks, let's take a look at a few things that can help us get our internet back on track. The first thing we need to do in order to do this, we need to start to take a look at our internet from a different perspective. Instead of focusing on features and tools, we need to focus on objectives. You have to be more concerned about the objectives rather than the tools. The reality is that there are many different tools to solve problems, but unless you can properly define the goals and objectives, the tools don't ever matter. So we believe that successful collaboration and successful internet is based upon five key objectives. Um, four of which are focused on customers and end users, and another is focused more on the administration and management. So if we look at the first one, ask, and these are all catering to key objectives that a person wants to use, the way that they're wanting to interact with other users, way that they want to interact with your internet. The first one is ask. People want to ask questions and seek help. They usually have something that's a problem that they're trying to solve, and they want to ask, they want to get feedback from other users. So making sure that you have tools that facilitate and make it easy for your employees to ask questions and share information with other, um, other employees is key. The other piece is share. And that means that people want to share information and they want to see what others are sharing. Maybe there was some big milestone in the company and they want to share that and they want other people in the company to see that. Um, maybe it's photos from um, the holiday party or photos from a company event and they want to share those on the internet as well. It's important that you can do that because that is going to help to keep people engaged. And again, those tools that uh, facilitate the sharing, there could be any number of things. It could be galleries. It could be links to your YouTube channel. It's not about the tools. It's about the objectives. Discuss. People want to talk. They want to communicate with one another about ideas. Um, they want to share problems. They want to talk about common interests. They want to share success stories. Um, you know, in many organizations today, it's a distributed organization. They have people all over the globe interacting and collaborating with each other. And the typical water cooler chat just doesn't happen anymore. Um, a lot of times it's an online chat or a chat or it could be an instant messaging piece. But what happens is that a lot of times those conversations you know, they're one-to-one -one and they're not captured anywhere. Um, maybe it's something, a discussion that could be a benefit to other people in the organization. So being able to provide a, a tool, uh, multiple tools where people can talk, where they can communicate with one another is really key to uh, productivity and getting people engaged on your site. And then the other piece that's key for users is to the ability to learn. They want to learn. They want to see information. They want quick access to information. Um, more people would love to see information. They want to search for something before they ask. So if they can find it on their own, that is going to help them be more productive. People crave information. They want to go ahead and see it. They want to find it. They want to read about it. So being able to make sure that you have this information on your internet, whether it be in the form of a wiki or online documentation or document management tools, that is key to making sure that people have the ability to learn from the internet that you're providing. But finally, in, in, in order to make all of this a success, people and business owners have to listen. Listening provides the tools that provide insight for your internet. This is going back to the idea of having some performance metrics and tools so that people can really see what's going on and how they're accessing information. Whether this is you know, tools for the internet manager or the business executive, without the tools to the listen, the internet can't adapt or grow. So it's really important that that listening is built two-way as well. It's so that you know, your end users are providing feedback and you're being able to um, report on that feedback and take action on that feedback. 
but also see how they're doing. So it's how they're interacting with the content and one another. Seeing how people are starting to work within your internet is a lot of are a lot of people focusing more on discussions. Are people performing searches and they're not finding the information they need? So having the tools that allow you to listen and monitor the activity on your internet is going to be very, very vital to making sure that your internet is productive. So we talked about the lack of um, direction earlier, and, and so I just want to recap on this. It's about providing clear direction. Clear direction on the purpose of your internet. What are the business problems your internet can solve? You know, if someone says, hey, we're just going to go spin up an internet because we need an internet, that should be a red flag for you. You need to find out what problems and how the internet is going to solve these problems for you. How does it make it easier for employees to do their jobs? If your employees are always using products like Salesforce and Outlook um, and other types of applications, is your internet just going to be another distraction for them? Or is there a way that your internet can bring all those pieces together for them? So you need to make sure that you have some very clear direction on the purpose and goals of the internet. And also provide clear direction on the tools, how to use the tools and when. Um, one of the key principles for an internet is, and, and for knowledge management is a single source of truth. Um, and make sure that the other tools on your internet support that flow of information. So for example, a fairly common approach um, on internet these days is to use a wiki um, as the single source of truth. Um, maybe it's not like a, a wiki where everybody has the ability to manage the content, but maybe there's a select group. Um, but having that tool where that is that main source of information is key for making it successful. You then use other tools within your site, so blogs. Um, use the blogs so that they can be used for announcements and point people to the wiki. Um, use your forums so that forums will be used to discuss content um, that might need to be added or um, updated in a wiki. Employees can collaborate on that content before it is published into the wiki where it becomes the main source of information. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that there is one area, whether it be a wiki or your blogs or some other type of content um, area, that provides the most accurate information. Uh, making sure that you have a clear information flow makes it very easy for employees to find information and then share that information. You don't want them to have to, to jump from page to page in your internet to find, you know, whether it be product manuals or company announcements or uh, other types of competitor information, whatever it might be. You want them to have a way that they know, this is where I go, and then I just can go from one direction to another within their site, easily navigate to other pages. Keep it simple. Less is more, especially when you're just getting started. You may want to start off with a simple design and one department. Get them familiar with the tools and process and allow them to be champions and spread the word to other departments. Just because the intranet package that you bought or that you're using online has dozens of features, it doesn't mean you need to use everything. Use the tools that make the most sense and that will help improve productivity. Roll out tool, additional tools when they're needed, not because you have them. This goes back to also making sure that you've properly defined your goals. Find the tools that are going to be simple for employees to use that help you achieve those goals. Going back to our previous example of using the wiki, you could just have the wiki and that's that single source of information and have other ways that people collaborate on it. You don't need to have every single tool available. Um, keep it simple, allow people to get started easily and start to build information and content in a way that's easy to use and easy to manage. Another key thing for, for today's internet is to think like Facebook. I know some organizations find that difficult to, to accept, but this guy here, Mark Zuckerberg, he changed everything. What started off as a website for college kids to interact has now become the second largest website in the world. Over one billion people now use Facebook. People now expect every web interaction to be like Facebook. If you've built any kind of website, I'm sure you've heard, I like how Facebook does it, or why can't this be done more like Facebook? Or if Facebook can do it, why can't you do it? You have to start thinking like Facebook because everybody else is. And this doesn't mean you need to go add Farmville or Words with Friends to your internet, but rather you need to start thinking about how easy Facebook makes some of the more common tasks. Things like uploading a picture, things like looking at a profile, finding people, searching for people, 
um, discovering information, um, sharing the latest news. Think about how Facebook does it. You can also look at other social networks like LinkedIn. Start thinking how those are, um, how information is being shared there. Once you start thinking like Facebook, and your internet users will start to appreciate it more. I know I've already talked about this, but I need to mention it again because this is really the, the one of the, the, the key pieces to making sure your internet is highly productive. You need to define the goals that are measurable. You need to look at the, 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 key, piece, the key areas of your internet and make sure that you can measure what's going on in those areas. If it's the wiki, you need to report on how many new pieces of content are being generated per day, per month, per week, whatever it may be. You need to look and see what users are generating the content and really break down that information and see if it makes sense for what you want to achieve with your internet. It's the same thing when you're talking about how many people are using it. How many departments are actually using the internet? How many people are getting value from it? Um, while you can have all sorts of statistics running on your website and seeing what's going on on the internet, run surveys, get feedback, get information back about your internet, define the goals and measure the results and then adapt and, and make adjustments as you need to. Monitor your statistics frequently and make changes where they're necessary. In some cases it might be changing navigation, it might mean changing design, but fine tune your content and information architecture until you see the results that show the success of your intranet. You need to figure out a way that's going to work best for you. There is no guarantee that every single metric or performance indicator for every intranet is exactly the same. It depends on the goals of your intranet and how your organization is going to make the most use of the intranet. Finally, you've got to make it easy and fun to use. Think outside the box. What will keep your employees engaged and productive? It doesn't always need to be about the business. Sharing photos from the holiday party or other corporate events can be a good way to remind your employees how valuable your internet really is to your organization. Think of other ways to make it more fun. It could be about employees sharing other information with each other. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm sure the CEO of the company is not going to want to know what people are having for lunch. But there are other ways to make it fun and keep people engaged, keep your employees engaged, so that they're coming back to your internet. You know, at the end, your internet is a website. It's your most websites, your marketing company, it, your marketing department. They're doing things to keep people engaged and keep them coming back to your website. In the end, you need to do the same thing for your internet, but you have to make sure it's even more valuable for your employees because your employees are what's the most vital to your your business. So as I talked in the beginning, .NET Nuke makes it very easy to build intranets. Um, if you're looking to rebuild your intranet um, or you're looking to start an intranet, you need to take a look at .NET Nuke because .NET Nuke makes it very easy. Um, we have some of the most common features that you can use for an intranet. So we have flexible member profile offerings, multiple registration methods. Um, you can interact, um, uh, integrate with Active Directory to make it easier for employees to, um, to sign into your intranet very robust role-based security, and of course, just a, a many different content management tools so that you can not only build out pages, but build out content within your site. Um, a very large selection of project modules and third-party modules available through um, in our ecosystem, but it's also a fantastic application platform so that you can actually build other tools um, or applications for your organization within the context of your intranet. Um, you know, one of the things that's really key as I mentioned earlier, is you know if your employees are jumping back and forth between different applications, you want to make sure that you can streamline that process if you can. And in some cases, it might mean that you have more applications on your intranet that that your employees are interacting with. And just to finish up, DNN comes in three different versions. We have our free community edition, our professional edition, and our enterprise edition, each, each with its own set of features and functions. I encourage you to visit our website and learn more about each of these. Uh, you can also sign up for a free trial and you can start taking a look at uh, .NET Professional Edition within in just a few minutes. This time we'll see if there's any questions.
So one of the questions is, um, will a recording be available? Yes, we will. this is being recorded, um, and everyone that has attended or registered to attend will receive an email once the recording is available. Um, another question, can you recommend modules for tracking user activity? Um, they're probably the best way that we've seen is that, um, and that's the easiest to get started, would be to use Google Analytics. There are ways that you can tie in Google Analytics so that they can track what's going on and, and different clicks within a page and get some very granular detail of what's, what's going on and how that user is interacting um, with uh, the content of your site. So another question, why should I choose DNN over SharePoint? That's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, you know, it really depends on your organization. Um, you know, SharePoint, of course, is a, a very great, a very good tool, has a lot of customization functionality, um, has some great document management um, capabilities. But again, it's about what's going to be ideal for your organization. Um, if, if SharePoint and having that integrated approach and um, that licensing model works for you, that might be the best choice. Um, if you're looking for something that has a more flexible licensing model, um, and has a lot of the same functionality that you expect to see in SharePoint, then I would suggest taking a look at .NET Nuke. Um, .NET Nuke has, um, you know, can be configured in many different ways, has many different tools that can get you pretty much everything that you need that you're getting from SharePoint. So let's see, looking through a few other questions. Any place we can see what the most popular modules are or highest recommended ones. Um, if you go to store.netnuke.com, you'll see that on the front page there, um, a lot of the key modules are highlighted there. Um, but what you can also do is you can search through the store for a particular module, and then there, there's the ability to sort the page based upon rating, based upon um, volume, based upon ma uh, many different things. Um, and that will help you identify which modules are the best. Um, a good question, do you have a list of suggested modules that will work well for various internet functions? I don't have a list right now, but um, that would actually make a very good blog post that I think that we'll work on and, and get that updated shortly. Do you know of a good, a good document management module we can use? Um, you have two um, really good options. One option um, in .NET New Professional Edition, we have um, our document library module, which allows you to, um, that, that's integrated with the .NET New um, file system, has the ability for you to upload documents, um, very granular control over who can manage the documents in there. Um, and so that is a very good um, utility um, that comes with .NET New Professional Edition. Um, there is another product called um, Document Exchange that's available in our store um, that's provided by a third party. Um, so you, you do have two good options for document management. Um, do you know of a good forms module which will talk to an external um, database? Um, there is a forms module um, called Dynamic Forms that's available um, on our store that I do know has some capabilities to talk to external databases. Um, there is also a product called XMOD, which can be, um, has a little bit more of a learning curve, but that can be customized to talk to external databases. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, we will, you know, if we didn't answer any of the, the, the question that you posed, we'll get back to you very shortly. Uh, I want to thank you for attending today, um, and thank you for listening about .NET Nuke and Internets.